Hi, I'm Jesse James Garrett, and I'm the lead designer of Aurora, the future browser concept created by Adaptive Path for Mozilla Labs. In this first scene, we'll see two people collaborate remotely across the web, sharing data and remixing it to resolve a dispute. After the scene, I'll be back with some commentary on the specific interactions that the scene illustrates. Oh, the cubs lost again? Hey, Alan, what do you mean, small harvest? We outproduced you guys last season and we're on track to do even better this year. The latest government weather data says you're in for more rain. And that can't be good for your crops after the last couple of months. I'm afraid you've been misinformed, my friend. You may be seeing a lot of rain up your way, but around these parts it's been nice and sunny. Look, I've got the data right here. Well, here, maybe this will help. See, right here? Oh, that's way too much rain for your crops. Now, wait a minute. I know we're not getting more rain than usual. Hang on, I'll show you. It's gotta be here somewhere. Well, I guess I haven't looked at this in a while. See, the rainfall we've been getting here at the farm is way lower. You're right! Say, do you mind if I share this with my neighbors? No problem. And it looks like you might outproduce me again this year. You better believe it. <laughs> we'll see. Talk to you later. Now, about those cubs. Guess I'll have to find out about the game on the tractor. This scene introduces most of the core concepts in the Aurora design. The hand cursor allows users to manipulate elements in the browser as they would objects in the physical world. They can grab, lift, push, pull, and drop anything. The browser interface is completely hidden unless it is invoked by the user, either in the form of the radial menu, seen here when Jill responds to Alan's text message, or in the form of the frame, seen later in this scene. Alan invites Jill to join him on a particular web page, so they can examine and work with the data on that page collaboratively. His cursor moves off screen for a second and returns with a presentation object, which can render any valid data set as a line graph. When Alan pulls the presentation object over the data table, we see for a brief moment a purple highlight, indicating that the data on the page is a valid match for that presentation object. The frame appears around the edges of the screen and has four major components. The shelf across the top provides access to frequently used objects. The history stack on the left 
provides a reverse chronological set of recently used objects. The user stack on the right provides a reverse chronological temporary storage area for objects the user wants to keep handy, and the wheel at the bottom contains all the objects she's actively connected to right now. Next, we see the spatial view, which applies a few simple rules and tools to enable us to organize people, places, and things on the web as objects in a three-dimensional space. The z-axis extending away from the viewer always represents time. When we stop using a page or interacting with a person, they begin to drift steadily away from us. Jill searches her history for her personal weather station, a website on her local network with data specific to her farm. But this is just a record of the page as it existed the last time she accessed it, so she uses a radial menu to get the current version. Then Jill pulls a data object from the page, which contains rainfall data for her farm in a structured, presentation-independent form. She pushes it on top of her user stack so she can retrieve it easily when she gets back to Alan. Before she returns with the data, we see a little bit of how the wheel interacts with the spatial view. As Jill turns the wheel, the spatial view gives greater visual emphasis to the clusters that are most closely related to the object at the center of the wheel at that moment, even though other clusters remain dimly visible. The placement of objects in the spatial view left to right or top to bottom is largely automatic. The browser analyzes the content of everything that flows through it, noting semantic similarities between objects and placing them near one another. These placements can always be adjusted by the user, and the browser will learn from these adjustments. Strong associations between objects are highlighted as clusters, the irregular colored shapes we see surrounding groups of objects. The labels on clusters can be suggested by the browser or created by the user. Jill suggests sharing with her neighbors what she and Alan have created. Finally, we see a seamless transition of the web experience to a mobile device as Jill heads out to the field.